liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. Yeah. Sorry about last week, everybody. There was really only one day that we could get together, and we couldn't get together. It just didn't work out. <laughs> Sometimes that's how it goes. Yeah. It's busy people. It was know. starting to look that way this week, too. Yeah, um, it was actually getting kind of dim there. Yeah. Cause... Well, I, I, you know, honestly, um, I expected when we couldn't get together Wednesday, I kind of expected you to just plan on coming over tomorrow, yesterday. Yeah, and, and I should have. I just got, dude, just wrapped up, man. Yeah. So, dude, you were home when I called. And yeah, that's I was home, but I was like, but, <laughs> I mean, I did hear kids yeah. yelling in the background. Uh, but, there was there was a little bit there was activity. We'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh well. Um. So, what are you thinking? Like, we, you know, we've really gotten away from the whiskey commentary at the beginning of the podcast, and yeah. and as everyone should know by now, this podcast was almost a <laughs> small batch whiskey review podcast. So, um, and then somehow it became political. Yeah, right. Imagine that. It's right? like the old joke about <laughs> hockey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I like this. Yeah. I think this is... I, I, um, so what is this again? This is Russell's Reserve Single Barrel Rye. Ah. Uh, it's It It doesn't have the like really rye sweetness to it that I kind of expected. Um, it's not like super sweet, but but it's strong. Like you can definitely tell it's like a single barrel. Like it's it's got a... It's got a, a a heavy flavor to it. Yeah, I well, it's got the it's a little spicy, like everything yeah. that comes. Yeah, I guess out that's of, what I mean is the spiciness. Yeah, it's it's yeah. definitely got that. I mean, that's what I like about the stuff that comes out of the Wild Turkey Distilleries is the spiciness that. Yeah, that, it's good. Like it I like it. It appeals to me. Sometimes they're so peppery they actually make me sneeze like pepper does. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, I'm, so I've had this bottle for a long time, and I never bothered to open it until tonight. So it's good. I like it. I give it a. I give it a. I give it a B. I give it a B. Yeah. Solid B. Solid. A solid B. A yeah. very solid B. Yeah. Only because, like I say, it is a, a rye, mm-hmm. and I expect my ryes to be a little sweeter. Yeah. And it's, well, you like that Templeton that is. I do. Like, it's like it, it's, it's like drinking cotton candy. That's and I love it. <laughs> And I love I, it. Oh man, I so don't. Yeah, I, it's way too sweet for me. Oh, I, I like that's how I like it though. Like to me, that's like the gold standard. Like yeah. that's an A right there. Okay. okay. At least if you're gonna be a rye, like if you're gonna be a rye, you need to be sweet. Yeah. Well, Al Capone I mean, liked gonna, it. If you're gonna, so they say. Well, yeah. There you go. That's good enough for me. Yeah. If it's good enough for Al, it's good enough for me. Yeah. What did he have? Syphilis. Mm. <laughs> well, I don't know about all that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> all right sorry that was total um okay well so we missed we missed some news yeah. oh he's in that and that's that's another clip that i should have pulled um maybe i can pull it after the episode and and throw it in yeah um we'll have to see uh but so there was the sort of state of the union oh yeah um, I did not watch much of that. <laughs> yeah, this guy is so boring. Like, I just it's can't so do boring. it, man. Like, so yeah, he comes and in. And at some point, about, he gets, I don't know, like 12 or 15 minutes. Yeah. You get like 12 or 15 good minutes out of uh, Biden most of the time before he starts <laughs> rambling and misspeaking and slurring yeah. and, like, yeah. you know, doing doing his Biden yeah, thing. just kind of drifting off. I saw a um, clip the other day of him just like completely, like a recent yeah. clip. Like he, he does this all the time, so I shouldn't be surprised. But he just yeah. like, you know, he just kind of drifts off. And it's like, well, you know, the thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I, like, no, I don't, man. No, like, I got no idea. I, <laughs> I was with you and then we, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. just kind of um, lost you. <laughs> he, yeah, he... I don't know. He's hard to follow sometimes, but that's the thing. Like after that, that point in time where he starts drifting, then it just, it just like, you just start to feel bad for him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, and, uh, I don't like feeling bad for him either. <laughs> yeah. Cause I don't like it. <laughs> no. I don't like any of them. Oh yeah. I don't like any of them. I don't like him either. <laughs> no. Um, but there was, so yeah, maybe I can pull the clip after, after we're done here, but, um, there was a point where he was talking about the wars and he was talking about the terror war and how it had spread beyond 
Afghanistan that, um, you know, and he starts, Al Qaeda's in here, Al Qaeda's there, Al Qaeda's all over the place. And like one of the, you know, he's like, Al Qaeda's in Yemen now. In 20 years, terrorism has metastasized. The threat has evolved way beyond Afghanistan. Those of you in the intelligence committees, the foreign relations committee, defense committees, you know well, we have to remain vigilant against the threats to the United States wherever they come from. Al-Qaeda and ISIS are in Yemen, Syria, Somalia, other places in Africa, in the Middle East, and beyond. Like, yeah, but we're supporting them in Yemen. <laughs> <All right. laughs> like, you know that, right? I, I'd put money he don't. Well, you're probably right. I mean, I'm willing to bet he don't. Like, I, there's no way he knows that. Mm-hmm. There's just, oh, man, that kind of thing just irritates me. Which is the, scary because the guy is, like, in control of the biggest military on the planet, and he doesn't even know what the hell it's doing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I think uh, even if he does know, and I, somebody knows. Well, people know. I mean, there's not, there's um, obviously people on his staff know, but I'm willing to bet he's not one of them. Yeah. Well, whoever wrote the speech probably knew. Yeah. Um, and I just feel like they're just, they're actively taking advantage of the general. Um, the public not knowing. Yeah. Public ignorance about this yeah. subject. Um, that, well, you know, every every Arab with a rifle is obviously a terrorist and they're all Al Qaeda, right? It's like yeah. they always took advantage of the, nobody knew the difference between the Taliban and Al Qaeda. And Al Qaeda, yeah. Um, that they conflated the two all the time. And, but in, in this case, it's even worse because he's saying, you know, well, we should be fighting. We, you know, we have to keep fighting. We have to be careful over there because this terror war is spread all over the place and there's Al Qaeda in Yemen. Yeah. But in Yemen, we are actually supporting Al Qaeda <laughs> yeah, against the Houthi. Yeah. Um, because the Houthi align with Iran, and that's our bigger enemy, even though Iran has never attacked anybody outside the Middle East. Yeah. That they always have to be the bad guy, though. Yeah. Well, and I, I maintain that if you look at a map, you understand why. Yeah. Um, because if the the land route between Asia and Europe runs through either Afghanistan or, or I'm sorry, either uh, Iran or through Russia. Well, right. there's no way we can take down Russia. So at least if we could control the trade routes through Iran, yeah. um, I, I don't know. That's what it seems like it is to me anyway. Yeah. It's, a, it's definitely an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, look at a map. If you if you see uh, if you see a map and you look at where Iran is, you kind of understand why because the uh, any kind of land route between Asia and Europe or Africa um, has to go through either Iran or through Russia. Yeah. And we're not going to fight Russia. Yeah. Hopefully. Right. <laughs> I have questions about that sometimes, too. <laughs> yeah, but, right. <laughs> and, and speaking of, we've certainly been pushing things there. Oh, man, it's ridiculous. Um, the stuff in Ukraine. And again, I, I know we had an entire episode on this, but just so that everybody understands... Um, the, the people in the Donbass region in Eastern Ukraine that, you know, that are the, the Russian insurgents, et cetera, et cetera. They're the people that live there. Yeah. And, um, and it was actually the, the Ukrainian government that invaded them, yeah. um, that they attacked. Yeah. Right. And Russians have been providing support for those people to defend themselves. Yeah. They haven't, there's no invasion over there from Russia. All right. So. Uh, you wouldn't get that listening to the news. I'm no, telling you, like no. it's propaganda to the umpteenth degree. Like. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't understand it. Like why in the world we would we want to ally with Ukraine anyway? Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I say that, but the government that we supported there, the people that we, that, that the United States supported in the coup in 2014 are Nazis. Like literally, <laughs> literal Nazis. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I guess there's no, there's no limit of what we'll do to antagonize Russia. Yeah. Um, and well, and it's, it goes back to the old, like we don't have any bit, this isn't our fight. No. Like this is, it's not like it's our backyard. It's not like this is somewhere where we've got, well, we need a whole bunch of influence. Like this is their deal. Let them hash it out. We've got no business in this. Well, there's, there's a lot of people that really believe in the world empire of the United States. Yeah, but that's all this is. Like the only the only arguments you can make for us to be involved is empire arguments. 
Like, yeah. and, there, and there are people, you're right, there are people who believe that, that believe mm-hmm. if we're not involved in everything, then that the whole world's just going to go to pot. Mm-hmm. But the, the truth is, is that we don't need to be, we only make things worse by involving ourselves in these things. Yeah. That, that don't involve us. <laughs> yeah. And we're antagonizing a country with thousands of thermonuclear warheads. <laughs> yeah. 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 For no reason. Like, yeah. no, no gain here at all. Well, um, I, you know, I'd like to, this is something that I want to spend more time on going forward on the podcast is just the, the nuclear question. Yeah. Um, because I think it's a really important one and I think it's something that doesn't get enough attention. Yeah. Oh, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, it's there, there seems to be an assumption that nobody would ever use nuclear weapons. And if that's the case, why have them? Yeah. All right. Um, and if, you have them, I think that it becomes an option. Yeah. Period. It will always be an option. It's always on the table now that, I mean, and it, it can And so never... you can't ignore that that's a factor. <laughs> well, yeah. And even if each country only had a handful, which we don't, by the way, yeah. but even if that was the case, they're still there. They're still going to be the option mm-hmm. for them to be used. Like, yeah. I mean, this is, this is one of those things you can't put it back in the box. Like the cat ain't going back in the box. <laughs> yeah. Well, and th- so this is another thing that has come up um, recently in terms of funding um, is that there, there's a, at least there has been a debate about whether we upgrade and, and so forth our land-based nuclear weapons. The, yeah. you know, the, um, oh, uh, you know, what do, we, what do we even call them? I can't, you know, I can't. the thing. Yeah, you know, the thing. I've got, got what Biden's got, right? Uh, <laughs> it's it's wearing on me now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> My hair's turned all gray, and now Ooh. I can't. Um, no, the uh, the uh, the land-based weapons, the big silos. The you know, silos. The, the, the I don't huge, know what they're called. Um, the, it's about the trajectory. That's, that's oh, what they're named oh. after. They're ballistic. Ballistic the, missiles. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I, had to, I had to do the hand signal. <laughs> yeah, and I still wasn't getting it. I was <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I get what they do, man. Like, those are missiles. <laughs> yeah, the, the intercontinental <laughs> ballistic missiles, right? Okay. So whether we upgrade and replace what we've got, which is a huge yeah. contract for somebody. I think oh, Northrop yeah. Grumman, actually. But, oh, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, there's so there's this huge question about whether we do that. Uh, because the truth is that they're the most dangerous Yeah. because they're stuck. And yeah. so you have to make a decision pretty quickly about whether you want to launch those or not. Yeah. Um, the, you know, we have the, what do they call it? The Trident system where there's land-based, air-based and sea-based, uh, nuclear missiles. So they can launch from, um, subs, they can launch from, uh, bomber aircraft. Um, or we've got these big ICBMs. Yeah. Well, you can move around the subs and you can move around the planes. Can't move around the ones that are stuck, though. Yeah, so if if there ever was a nuclear war that started, those those things have to be fired quickly yeah. or they'll be eliminated. Yeah. Um, it also is a way to threaten all of us about <laughs> nuclear war because they put them, you know, all over the country so that they, and they, they spread them out of the, the big population centers which yeah. sounds good, except that it means that, you know, the other side has to have that many more missiles because yeah. they not only have to hit Chicago, they've got to hit middle of nowhere in North Dakota where the ICBMs are too. Yeah. Um, but uh, the the thing is that you have to make a decision very quickly about whether you launch those, yeah. whereas the the subs and the planes, you know, you can, you can move them and so that they're a little bit more flexible in terms of ensuring that, that it really the is... Yeah. Well, no. or, or are those a legit? Yeah, um, that it really is a nuclear attack that's happening. Yeah. All right. You don't have that luxury with the ICBMs. Yeah, because by the time the the nukes have went off, the the ICBM bombs are gone. Like, yeah. Those are those exactly. Are toast. So yeah. you have to launch them quickly. Yeah. Um, and they're essentially useless because they don't move, and you don't need them anymore yeah. because you you've got the. You subs can't and launch you got them the and then send them into a holding pattern. No, no that's true. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, is that what the upgrade is? Can we upgrade them to like launch and then just kind of like hover over Russia till we're sure they hit us? <laughs> and no, if not, like fly into space? I think it just makes them a little faster. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Well, because the Russians have done that. 
Yeah. Um, you know, their missiles are all like, oh, man, really like fast now. So yeah, I saw something to that, avoid missile defenses. Yeah. They had um, some that they can like control or something. I don't know. It was years yeah. ago. They put out this thing. They were talking about their new system. It was a probably, mm-hmm. it was probably about two years ago when they yeah. upgraded their system. Mm-hmm. And I, I watched some videos on it. It was, I mean, it wasn't nothing like radically crazy, but they were like boasting how good their system was. Yeah. You know. Um, so the point is that the really the upgrade of the ICBMs is just so that you can put more taxpayer money in the pockets of these big um, uh, military contractors. Yeah. Because we don't need them. Yeah, and, I mean they don't have a whole lot of use. They have yeah, they have very limited utility. Yeah. And so the only reason to spend a bunch of money upgrading them is so that you know some some of these companies can make a bunch of money off of. All of us. Yeah, right. right. Um, I didn't plan on talking about that in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of no. we went down the road here. But it's something important to, for. I mean, it's never a bad idea to not talk about nuclear stuff. Because yeah. Because it's, like I say, definitely something to be thinking about. It's something that goes unsaid. And, yeah. And yeah. it shouldn't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess really what I wanted to start with um, was this. So this is another one of those bits of news that we missed. missed. Yeah. Um, there was a clip of Fauci in a hearing going round and round uh, where he said that he wasn't concerned about um, about personal liberty. He was only concerned oh, about public health. Do you I did, remember this? I did, I did okay. hear this clip. This popped yeah. up all over the place yeah, and people made everywhere. a huge deal out of it. Yeah. And I just wanted to point out that that's his job. Yeah. He he's not responsible for being worried about personal liberty. Yeah. His job is to give advice to advise the Congress and and the government on public health uh, measures. Yeah. He he is only an advisor though. Yeah. The problem is that he doesn't have the power to implement any of this stuff. Yeah. The, Somebody's <laughs> given him the power to implement well, all of this. And that's where stuff. our system's kind of turned on its head. Like, so we've got this guy who gives advice on what the public health stuff should be. Mm-hmm. And then basically we have a Congress and and just yeah, Congress in general just kind of rubber stamps whatever he says and doesn't go through the motions of, well, can we are we even allowed to do this? Is yeah. this even constitutional? Yeah. Does the constitution restrict us from Locking people in their homes? Yeah. Uh, well, apparently not during a <laughs> pandemic because, like, that's yeah. what we've done. But it, it, yeah, is they keep creating these carve outs out of nothing. Yeah, out of nothing. There's mm. no basis for any of that. Yeah. Um, now, I don't remember reading anything in the Constitution that said under any particular circumstance that all of these liberties go away. Yeah. No, there's because, because it's not there. But at the same time, if we had, th- that's the, the problem is, is that they're, the, I lost my train of thought. (laughs) I was really going somewhere with that too. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, they they don't have the authority to do any of this, but they just do it anyway. Yeah. And and nothing happens. Like they just, it's, we all kind of bend the knee and there we are. Yeah. All these state governments and the the federal Congress, those are the people that are at fault. We can't blame Fauci for this. It's not Fauci's responsibility to be concerned about personal liberty. And it's everybody else. It's the, the actual government elected officials that are supposed to be concerned about that. And they're the ones that have the power to implement this stuff, not Fauci. Well, and that's where I wouldn't have a problem with like Fauci and even the government coming out and being like, all right, we are, this is what we recommend. Like we mm-hmm. recommend oh, you yeah. stay home or we recommend you wear masks or mm-hmm. we recommend this and recommend that, but no teeth behind it. That's where the gut, that's where I have a problem. Like the government can recommend whatever they want. It's different when they like, well, you have to, like we have a mask mandate in Alabama. You have to wear a mask if you're in a building. That's yeah. different than recommending you wear a mask inside a building. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And they, they shouldn't have the power to do that. Yeah. And this idea that people in general don't have the ability to make their own judgments about what they feel is yeah is a risk worth taking is it should be offensive to everybody. Well, yeah. To every grown-up. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, this also brings up a, another point. This, I think, leads naturally into the, the next bit of this, um, which is, you know, the... History should teach us that. Um, okay, well, let me let me start it a different way. Actually, okay. Um, if 
all of the, if the vaccines and so forth, all of these um, recommended measures, wearing masks and social distancing and all that stuff is so good for all of us. Yeah. They shouldn't have to propagandize to such a great degree to get it to happen. Well, and that's the truth. And, and it's kind of been the truth throughout this whole deal, because at the end of the day, if like if people were really scared, like mm-hmm. if like truly scared, then they would do these things on their own. The problem is, is nobody's really been. It's, I mean, at the very beginning, there was some fear, mm-hmm. but the fear dissipated pretty quick. And that's the reason the government only for in. about half of the population, apparently. Yeah, but there is a there is a huge portion of the population that is terrified of this. Well, there is. I and mean, you know, you're you not ju- wrong. You, you can talk about. Well, I told that story a while back about the ABC store uh, girl that was just like Pat- absolutely freaked out about the person that didn't have the mask all the way up over their nose and yeah, and so forth. Um, sometimes that's the case, but sometimes it's a power trip too. And that's, sure. that's something else you run into is like, you, know, you see somebody without a mask and instead of, Oh, I better stay away from that person. They're not wearing a mask. And I, I'm worried about people not wearing masks. They go mm-hmm. approach that person and get all up in their face about not wearing a mask. Yeah. And that's like, clearly they're not worried about catching this thing. They're worried about, well, they're not following the rules. Yeah. <laughs> you well, know, that there are, there are plenty of rule followers out there. There's no doubt about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, which is another disappointment of mine and Americans, <laughs> honestly. But me too. <laughs> but uh, the you know the government is is well the government and um, media and uh, well at the behest of the pharmaceutical companies, I would say, um, in both cases, both yeah. the government and well the government has their own reasons for it as well. But th- yeah. it doesn't help that there uh, there's a lot of elections funded by big pharma. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, not They're, to mention everything, like everything, like yeah, media. Well, the huge, yeah, the huge uh, sponsors for almost all media is pharma. Is big pharma. Just watch the evening news. You'll see. Mm-hmm. There's a reason they're not talking about any negative effects from the vaccine just or watch medicines. The ads. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like I mean, you watch the news, uh, ha- over half the ads are are pharma ads, mm-hmm. and so you can't tell me that they're gonna that the news is gonna report on anything negative for anybody that's paying their bills advertising wise. Yeah. Like they're just not going to do it. Yeah. Um, and so there, all these groups are trying to induce a panic to get a desired behavior yeah. um, out of people. And what I would say is back to what I started with is that history should suggest to you that if they are working this hard to make you feel like there's something that there is, there's something to be afraid of that you should know that there isn't. Yeah. Because when there actually is something to be afraid of, yeah. they don't talk about it. Yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. Yeah. Um, so the fact that they're they're trying to induce this panic, that the fact that they're talking about how you should be panicked should be evidence to you that you don't need to be afraid. Yeah. Because when you really do have something to be afraid of, they go out of their way to cover it up. Yeah. No, it's the truth. Um, and... You know, <laughs> along that line, uh, with the the uh, pharma companies specifically. Uh, now, I'd heard a bunch of reports of this, and now I have a clip. Um, so it's a kind of a long clip, but um, I and I'll, maybe I can cut it down a little bit when we're done before. We, we actually I, I, was, it, but. I, I don't know. I just play it in its entirety, man. I, yeah. I think I, it's it is a long clip, but I think it's worth listening to. All right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and play the clip, and then we'll then we'll talk about it. All right. Vaccine scientists hope that the volunteers will stay in the study for two years. Participants provide periodic nose swabs and sometimes saliva samples to see if they've been infected, and they also give blood so scientists can better understand how the vaccine is providing protection. Mott was one of about 650 volunteers who took the experimental Moderna vaccine at a company called Johnson County Clinical Trials in Lenexa, Kansas. Dr. Carlos Fierro, who runs the study there, says every participant was called back after the Food and Drug Administration authorized the vaccine. During that visit, we discussed uh, the options, which included stay in the study without receiving the vaccine. And amazingly, there were people 
couple of people who chose that. He suspects those individuals got spooked by rumors about the vaccine. But everybody else who had the placebo shot went ahead and got the actual vaccine. So now Fierro has essentially no comparison group left for the ongoing study. It's a loss from a scientific standpoint, but given the circumstances, I think it's the right thing to do. Okay. So there you are with a, an actual report. And like I said, I'd heard a bunch of reports of this, but this is the this is the only, like, well, I've heard a couple of clips, but this is the best clip I've heard about them uh, eliminating the control groups <laughs> from these vaccine studies. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and the, the last thing the guy says is, uh, well, this is a loss from a scientific standpoint. You're damn right it yeah, is. Oh, right? my God. <laughs> like, um, and, but under the circumstances, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. These but, are the same people that's preach and follow the science. Yeah. And he's admitting that, this is, that they're not following the science at all, that they're yeah. doing what they're, they're not they, doing science. They're not doing the science. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then you want to convince me to go get this thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, you. <laughs> um, you know, a few things that I want to say about this. First is that point that you just made. Like this, these are the same groups of people that are going out there saying you got to follow the science, got to follow the science. There, science is not a collection of facts. I know I've said this so many times on this podcast, but there's yeah. such a, a misunderstanding about what science is. Yeah. Um, science is not a collection of facts. Uh, science is a process. Science is a verb. Science is a way of eliminating possibilities. Yeah. All right. Um, and the so at the beginning of this, when they were saying follow the science, there was no science. And yeah. now there's an opportunity to to actually get some science out of it. And they're ignoring the scientific method, which is what science really is. Yeah. It's it's the method that yeah. is what science is. Oh, absolutely. Um, and so they're ignoring and and actually just like throwing out the scientific method. Yeah. Um, and so there's, <laughs> there's so many things wrong with this. I, I personally, I, I'm almost at a loss here because I think this is unconscionable. Yeah. No, I totally like, Yeah. Really unconscionable that they would do this. Now, yeah. my first thought, and I mentioned this to somebody at my office and they said the same thing. Yeah. Um, so it makes me feel like I'm not just like a paranoid nutcase. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my first thought when I heard this is, is if they're eliminating the control group, then there's no way of proving any kind of relationship, any kind of causality yeah. um, between the vaccines and any kind of effects that we see in the future. Yeah. There's, I mean, he said the, these studies usually last two plus years. Yeah. Yeah. Two to three years to see if there's any long-term effects of this. Yeah. Well, in two to three years, when we have some long-term effects that are, that are presenting. Yeah. yeah. You can't, you can never you prove. You can't point it back to, because yeah. you lost the control group. Because you have no control group, except yeah. for those of us that chose not to We're get the We're the control vaccine. group now. Yeah. But, 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 but as far as like follow but, the science, yeah, it doesn't that's work not a, that that's way. Not a, yeah, that's not a scientific way of doing the, no, these absolutely. things. No, absolutely. People don't get to choose whether they're in the control group or not. That's the whole point, yeah. is that they're not supposed to know. Well, that was going to be my next question. Is so, did they tell these people at some point who was who was placebo and who was vaccine? Yeah, they called back all the. That's well, what no, he I mean, said, I mean, prior that, to that, like, I oh, mean, because uh, I don't know, because generally that's not how it works. No, right? no, no. Normally, no. you shouldn't find out which side you were in until the tests are done, if, right? If even then, yeah. Um, no, they. I, I don't think that they told those people before they called them all and said, "Hey, yeah." Um, you were given the placebo. Do you want the real vaccine? Yeah. Yeah. They did that after the, yeah. When they called them all in. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but the, <laughs> I mean, like, I can't believe that. Well, so back to what I think is the it's issue. Going on is I here, think yeah. that this is, this is them this is protecting CYA. themselves. Cover your, cover your, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is them protecting themselves from any kind of lawsuits in the future because you cannot show causality without the control group. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the truth. I've and uh, and so and for those of you that are like oh so this is another one of those big disconnects by the way from with people yeah. that are like oh you know you got to go out and get the vaccine oh the vaccines are safe etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah these are the same groups that just two years ago everybody was going on and on about the the same groups that are now like this is so safe like you got to go do this yeah. these are the people that produce the opioids Johnson and Johnson we actually covered the court case oh yeah on Johnson and Johnson on this podcast a long yep. time ago I think it was uh the candy man's in town or something was the, na was title, the title of the podcast yeah um so 
Johnson and Johnson is responsible. Of course, uh, the big one is um, with the opioids. Is it's it's none of these groups, and I can't think of the name of the one that makes OxyContin now. Oh, I can't remember. Um, we covered it in that podcast, though. I remember. Yeah, talking I could flip about back it. through my notes, but it would make a bunch of noise. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, uh, so let's take. Johnson Johnson though is a part of that. Yeah. Um, let's take Pfizer. Uh, do you um, do you remember the uh, in beta and in Avenza? Um, yeah. Both of those were discontinued. Yeah. After they went through the FDA testing. Yeah. Um, they were both discontinued. Uh, there was a huge lawsuit about marketing infractions um, against Pfizer for uh, Bextra and Celebrex. Yeah. And one of the big pieces of that was that they withheld information about the cardiovascular risks of taking these drugs. Yeah. And let me remind everybody again that all the, the data on these um, vaccines that's out there right now was done by the companies that produce them. Yeah, right. <laughs> don't tell me they don't have an incentive to keep quiet some of the side effects. Oh, absolutely they do. All right. Um, and we're certainly... N- now, it may be more dangerous t- to get the... The virus. The virus than the vaccine. But you also got to calculate in Mm. uh, how likely you are to get the virus. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, like that, that's a, that should be a part of the calculation of your risk assessment. It's not, it's not just, um, mortality rate of virus versus mortality rate of vaccine or, or not yeah. necessarily mortality, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it should be uh, mortality rate of vaccine versus mortality rate of virus times likelihood of getting virus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's like I've said from the beginning, and I truly do mean this, like it's, you should make a decision for yourself whether or not to get it. Like I personally am not, but it's depending on what your risk factors are, like it might be smart for you to get this vaccine. I'm Mm -hmm. not trying to say that it's absolutely a bad idea to get the vaccine. I'm just saying go in with all the knowledge ahead of time and, and make the best decision. But like, there's definitely some nefarious things here. Like, and it's yeah. not. And, well, this and, is and one the of those things would, that that we're gonna see in the future. I think if it yeah. comes out. Uh, by the way, I like hunted for information about Moderna. I know Moderna has been involved in some some big settlements about some stuff that they messed up in the past too. Yeah, but it's hard to find. They've done a like, good job of burying it. Yeah, absolutely. Like you yeah. start doing searches on Moderna and uh, settlements and so forth, you get a whole page of information about the how their great COVID vaccine. <laughs> All right. And you know, Moderna has, as far as I can tell, has more um, influence within the government than any of the rest of these. Yeah. Um, Fauci is a big Moderna supporter, as yeah. an example. Yeah. Um, he's worked with them in the past. He's, you know, owns patents with them. He's like, you know, yeah. I, I think that in the future, if, if this ever gets uncovered and uncovering, it's going to be a chore for somebody. Yeah. Um, but hopefully some good investigative reporter is going to get on this or a group of investigative reporters is going to get on this in the future. And we're going to find out that this whole event was a huge, huge corrupt scandal. Yeah. Oh, I I think so. Um, and again, and, and this is not to say that the virus doesn't exist. I know that the no. virus exists, and it's not and the, I know that it's dangerous to a, a a group of the population, like very dangerous to a group of the population. Oh, absolutely. And I know that the vaccines are effective to some degree. Yeah. Um, probably to a very high degree, actually, of actually preventing you from getting seriously ill, at least initially. Yeah. Um. You know, going back to the animal testing on stuff, these kinds of vaccines that they've done in the past, when you get re-exposed to the wild virus, it's more severe. You just have to remember, this is an experimental vaccine. Like there's, there's no question about that. You can't, I mean, there's really no debate as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is something that they haven't done and they absolutely haven't done on the scale. So, I mean, this is a, a, it's, but the, to listen to the media, you would think there's no risk at all to get mm-hmm. this vaccine. And it's just not the case. And yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. Like, I, I truly am not yeah. saying that. Like, it, for some people, I would absolutely think that it's the best route for them to go to get mm-hmm. the vaccine. I am pro-vaccine. Just, yeah. I will make that clear. I am pro-vaccine. Yeah. Just not this one. Yeah. I, yeah. And not, like I say, and for some people, and absolutely. And not, not just this one that I'm not pro, yeah. but like, you know, get your MMR and your, like, yeah. all these vaccines that have been around for a long time. Yeah. I, I'm, 
that are that tried have, and true. Yeah. 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 I'm all for. And I know that they can have bad effects too. Yeah. So Well, there's risk involved in anything. Mm-hmm. Like anything you do involves risk. Mm-hmm. Um and that's that's what what I tell people when they when because I get asked about this a lot, is like you gotta weigh your own risk mm-hmm. with your own health and make make a decision what's the best decision for you. But for me, it's not. Like, I am not in any risk factors for this. I just, I'm yeah. not worried about this thing. Yeah. So. I, I mean, I have a I have a congenital heart condition that could be a complicating factor. Yeah. Don't know. Um, of course, yeah. I was a smoker for like 15 years. Oh, or, me too. So. You know, that. Yeah. Although, <laughs> the, at least the initial study suggested that being a smoker helped protect you. <laughs> from the, the, yeah, <laughs> from right. the virus. Uh, you know, as long as you never mind all the complications that come with smoking. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, anyway, here, this is another opportunity though, for us to talk about the market and how the market tends to self correct. Yeah. Um, and how there is, there isn't a free market at work no. here. Uh, so, you know, I've said over and over again that, well, you can feel, and, uh, even about some of these, uh, uh, pharmaceutical products, that it is not like when we were talking about opioids, yeah. it is not in the interest of a company to put out a product that will kill its clients. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not. Yeah. Um, same way as it's not in the interest of the virus to kill its host. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, but it does. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Although over time, most viruses tend to become far less lethal. Yeah. Because of that, yeah. Um, because it, the quicker it kills the host, the less time it has to spread to other hosts. So reproduce, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you just got the whole uh, evolution by natural selection thing going on. Yeah. Right. But um, anyway, the uh, that being said, though, these companies are protected. Yeah. They're they're not risking anything. Like if there's a whole bunch of bad side effects from this that um, that they're responsible for, they have indemnification from the government. They also, by the way, um, don't stand to lose nearly as much in uh, research and development because the government funded a huge portion oh, yeah. of that too. Absolutely. All right, all with your money. So this is the this is the ironic thing about it is that. Um, if something terrible were to happen to you as a result of taking the vaccine, and I'm not saying it will, but there is a there is a yeah. possibility because well, and, there are, thi- like, <laughs> there are things like over a thousand people have died after taking the vaccines at this point. I yeah. mean that's not a lot, yeah. but it means that but there is a possibility. You're it's rolling a, them a, dice. Yeah. A non-zero chance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, then, like you may be able to get something out of it. Yeah. But that company that produced that, like the manufacturer, the creator of that, they're has no liability it. at all. They're not. They're not the ones paying it. It's yeah. coming from the government. So you essentially paid, <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> to have somebody develop a, a were something to happen again. Yeah. Um, you paid for it to have a company develop a poison for you, <laughs> that then you paid yeah. to recover or to get um, damages paid out on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, so you paid for the whole thing. Yeah. Right. There, there is no market involved in this. It, yeah. It's not a oh, free yeah, market no. that does this because the, the liability, um, and the, you know, the bad press, uh, reducing market share and so forth. Those are things that, that limit, um, any kind of nefarious certainly, or even, um, um, negligent, uh, kind of activities of a business when they're producing a product. Yeah. But those things aren't in play here. None of that exists in this situation. Yeah. yeah. So, and the deal with the, the, um, the Pfizer and all of these companies is just crazy what they do with our media. Like mm-hmm. the fact that they can fund all, pay, get, buy all these commercials and basically just funnel money into the media mm-hmm. so that the media won't report on this stuff. Yeah. Like, and you know, I was reading something. I guess most countries they can't do that. Like that's we're one of the few countries that allow yeah. these drug companies to advertise. And I'm not opposed to allowing them to advertise. I think again, restricting advertising is not well, a place I'm, of a government. Yeah, but, I'm not. I'm not necessarily for that either. But but it does make you kind of question like should because basically they're just buying off the media. That's all any of this is. Um, and and just like you, like I'm not for like restricting. Um, 
business activity, I guess you would call it. Yeah. Uh, because I'm not like that's not somewhere I'm not I'm not exactly okay with that. But there's definitely a problem here. Yeah. Um, there was a uh, a podcaster that I used to listen to, uh, Kara Santa Maria. Yeah. Um, and she had a um a, a bit at Huffington Post. So this is by the way why I don't really listen to her. So I have limited podcast time yeah. to listen to. And during the Trump years, she's such a radical progressive that I could not could, listen yeah, to her. She had derangement. Um, yeah. Um, but uh, she does a science podcast um, called... Uh, uh, oh, dang. Now I can't remember the name of it. Oh, oh no. well. Anyway, you can look it up. Kara Santa Maria is the, the name of the person. The yeah. podcast was actually mostly pretty good. It's an interview yeah. podcast. Yeah. Um, science stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, it, and it's, like I said, it's mostly pretty good, but she's like talks a little bit too much about politics and she doesn't know what she's talking about most of the time. Yeah. So she, she's good with the science. She's not good with, with the science. Yeah. Um, talk nerdy to me. That's ah, it. Yeah. Talk you talked about that me. one a good bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, uh, but she, she said this thing one time she said it, uh, about the advertisement for, for the various drugs. Yeah. She says, um, at, if I go into my doctor and tell them what to prescribe me, at what point is my doctor no longer my doctor and just my drug dealer? Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. Um, I and, mean, and that's and that's the only the the only legitimate reason for these um, drug companies to be advertising is just that to convince mm-hmm. you to go to your doctor and request these things. Yeah, um, and that, like I say, that's the legitimate reason for them to be doing this. But there's most of these drugs you're never going to do that with. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just a payoff for the for the media. It's, yeah. I mean it's just out in the open payoff. And I don't know what the answer is. I'm just saying that's I mean, but you got to accept <laughs> what it is. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess it's kind of the same thing as um as uh the military companies Grummet and all of them with the with the with buying, their, exactly with, with funding paying for PBS and all of these public broadcasting. It's the mm-hmm. same thing. I mean, they're just they're buying off these these groups. Yeah, Boeing is not advertising to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Northrop Grumman, General Dynamics, those yeah. companies are not advertising to me. Yeah, and if you don't believe it, listen to the beginning and the end of NPR every night. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, because brought to you in part by Boeing, blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, like, what, what, why do they, what interest do these guys have other than to keep stuff quiet and keep yeah, stuff Yeah, to control the it? news. Exactly. Yeah. That's the only, the only reason they have. Um, and this is probably as good a place as any to kind of wrap things up unless you got more to say. No, I don't really. I was trying to think if I had anything that there was a lot of stuff that went on last week. I hate that we missed. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, well, it's old news now. Well, I hope everybody's watching Saturday Night Live tonight. Elon Musk is going to be on. Oh, how exciting. Do- Dogecoin is going to the moon. We're going to the moon. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, and I hope, then there's I hope, that. I hope you bought your um, dodge. I just, I just want to make sure that to remind people, I guess, yeah. of who they're dealing with with these vaccines. Yeah. Um, Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson and Johnson. This is big pharma. Oh yeah. <laughs> that you were yeah. complaining about just two years ago. Yeah. That you were talking about how evil these companies are. These are the same companies. It's oh yeah. The same companies. Go back and watch Constant Gardener. Oh, did you yeah. ever see that film? I don't, I don't think I did. Okay. Um, it was uh, by the same guy that did City of God, a Brazilian uh, filmmaker. Yeah. Um, I can't think of it. I'm so terrible with names, man. I, <laughs> Particularly I tonight. That, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe if I uh, if I drank the whole whiskey glass before we got started, it would have been a little easier. <laughs> who knows? Maybe, who knows? Um, but anyway, uh, uh, Fernando Moraes. That's it. Uh, yeah. Fernando Moraes. Um, he did a film called Constant Gardener uh, that is a, about a lot of the corrupt practices of the um, pharma companies, big pharma companies. Yeah. It's worth seeing. It, it's kind of a slow film, but it's like it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, it's probably not for everybody, but yeah. uh, I I enjoyed it and I thought it had a um, I had a really interesting point of how far these companies will go and how big the profits are for them. Well, this is, this will sound horrible, but I just, anytime I hear the names of, the, of these big pharma companies now, I just think of the umbrella corporation from, Oh uh, God, what is that series? I'm called? trying to remember. Uh, yeah. I, I can't spit it out for Re- some reason. Um, oh, resident evil. Is it resident evil? Is it? 
Is it? I think it is. <laughs> yeah, because it was is, the one. That is that was... the name of the movies too? I think so, but I, yeah. God, I could be wrong. I yeah. don't even know. But yeah, I think of the Umbrella Corporation. Yeah. Like, because, I mean, and you watch those movies, that's like the most evil corporation there is. And I don't really see much of a difference between Pfizer and these groups. I think at the end of the day, they care about the company and profits and and damn the rest. You know, I mean, if, if a million people have to die, then, you know, we'll cover it up somehow. You know, as long as they don't start turning into zombies, we'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> You heard it here. <laughs> in a couple of years, if you're taking the uh, mRNA vaccine, you're going to be a zombie. Well, I'm just saying. I'm not so saying. We'll go ahead and get this podcast banned from YouTube, too. Right. Um, I'm not saying you're going to turn into a zombie. I'm just saying I'm watching out for you. Can, God, God, can you say the stuff in jest and still get keep your, your podcast up? I wonder. Yeah, I do um, wonder, too. <laughs> I if guess we'll any, find out. any context taken in at all. Yeah. No, so. probably not. Um, but so, but there's a danger of, we'll maybe just have to discuss this sometime in the future. Uh, cause I've got a good friend who is m- mostly libertarian, yeah. not entirely, but mostly libertarian, certainly like a, a more conservative, small government type. Sympathetic um, to our cause. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who is really, really critical of the profit motive. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, he shouldn't be, I don't think. So, yeah. and you just sound very critical of the profit motive too. Well, I I am into it. I don't know. It just it's with these companies, some of the stuff you see them do, it just makes you wonder. Like, I, and yeah. I, it it is something we should have a deeper discussion about sometime mm-hmm. because because I do believe in the profit motive in most circumstances. Yeah. Um, but it does hit a point where you end up with companies that have so much control because that's where these companies are at. Well, okay. So, but the problem is there they isn't the profit get, motive or the company. It's the government that allows the gov- them to operate in that way well, that I, supports them. Well, yeah, because the truth is, is these companies wouldn't be where they're at without the government. Right. Like there's no question. Like if you take all of the government out of the scenario, these are all, there's a billion of these little companies mm-hmm. that are, that are doing these things and yeah. it, and it probably works a lot better. Yeah. But, well, because then the only way that you can sustain profit over time is by delivering a product that people want. Yeah. No. And that's, by enriching others, essentially. So, so you pretty well did just put it all together. I mean, that that's that's the difference is that mm-hmm. these these aren't just private companies doing what they want. They've got mm-hmm. the government's got their back. Yeah. And that's maybe that's how they end up so evil. I mean, there is because always, the government's yeah. always going to be evil. Yeah. That's yeah. It like, can be nothing else. Yeah, right? it can like, be the government can only be evil. So it would only make sense that the the companies that it props up would be the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, there is always the danger of short term, short term profits at at a uh, yeah, you know the snake oil salesman kind of thing. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and get my money and get out of town before everybody realizes they've been hoodwinked. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's but, harder and harder to do in this well, we, world. We live in too. a world where information is just mm-hmm. too, the world's just too small for that. Yeah. Uh, I would say. I mean, in many ways, you know, but even even in a completely anarchy society, mm-hmm. you would, there would be controls for stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like the, you would, there would be groups that would verify stuff, private groups that yeah. would verify things. Well, yeah. And that's the and you would, thing. And right? you would know that, well, I'm, if, if you do go to somebody that's not, you know, yeah. through one of these groups that, you know, you're taking a chance. Yeah. And their reputation and, and their profit yeah. um, is then dependent on them being right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Well, uh, that's, you know, that's a nice thought to end on, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. We figured it out. I'm excited. <laughs> we, we worked it all out. <laughs> Profit motive. Good. Yes. Vaccines. Yeah. Iffy. Yeah. yeah. Question more, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, you know, we keep promising to be back in a week and sometimes we're not. It may we, be less than a week this week. Maybe we'll get together a normal day this week too. We'll yeah. Get back on track. Yeah. This will be our get back on track week. Hopefully. 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 I make no promises, but hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the plan is yeah. to be back next week when we finally get this right. Uh, in the meantime, um, follow, like, subscribe, share, comment, tell us how great we are, etc. Absolutely. And um, until next time then, ciao. Later.